Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we are revisiting the Agathas Soul Cauldron Infinite Combo deck, which has gotten a few more tools over time. The main idea is still very much the same. We're trying to get Agathas Soul Cauldron on the battlefield. We can tap it to exile a card from a graveyard. We're trying to exile our own creatures, which will then also give us a plus one plus one counter on one of our creatures. And then each creature we control with a plus one counter on it will have all activated abilities of the creatures we exiled with the cauldron. And there's two specific creatures we're trying to exile to grant their abilities onto others, and those include a Sleep Cursed Fairy, which for one and a blue can untap itself, which is the main thing we're interested in, and then there's Kami of Whispered Hopes, which can tap to add X mana to our mana pool, where X is that creature's power. So if we have a three-powered creature with both the Sleep Cursed Fairy's untap ability and the Kami's ability, we can now make infinite mana, since the creature can tap making three blue mana, can spend two of it to untap that creature, rinse and repeat and that's how you can make infinite mana. And then once we have infinite mana, we can infinitely draw through the deck using the new Harrier Strix's ability, which for two and a blue lets us draw a card and then discard a card. So that's how we can cycle through the entire deck. The eventual goal being of getting the Realm Scorcher Halkite in the graveyard, which for one and a red can deal one damage to any target. So once again, we're trying to exile the Halkite with Cauldron. Could even be a second Cauldron after we make infinite mana. And then with infinite mana, we can deal infinite damage. We also don't need to worry about making red mana specifically, since Soul Cauldron will also fix our colors when it comes to activated abilities, which is pretty useful. And then to help discount activated abilities, we're also playing a Training Grounds, giving all activated abilities a 2 mana discount, will still cost at least 1 mana to activate, so we can now activate the Strix for just a single blue mana, which will significantly speed things up. And then Untapping with Fairy also gets a 1 mana discount, so we have more mana left over. And then eventually closing out the game with Hellkite also only costs us 1 one red mana per activation. And then one of the new additions to this deck is Marvin Murder's Mimic, a 2-2 that has all activated abilities of creatures we control that don't have the same name. So Marvin can also inherit the Sleep Cursed Fairy and Kami's abilities, which means we can maybe curve Marvin into Kami and then immediately tap Marvin for 2 mana, which can lead to some pretty efficient turns. Can also inherit Rona's ability to tap to draw and discard, so that can also help cycle through the rest of the deck. And then we've got a full set of cash grab, which can mill four cards to find a permanent among them and put it in hand. The rest goes into our graveyard, so just good to mill fairy and the kami and hopefully find soul cauldron with it. Same with the archaeologist, which will also mill three cards when it enters, finding a non-creature non-land to put in hand. The rest ends up in our graveyard, so we'll still hit our cash grab, cauldron and training grounds, but the rest will get milled. And then at one mana I'm also playing Omen Hawker, which can tap to add two mana that we can spend on activated abilities. So it can also make it easier to pay for all these abilities like the Strix, so we can start cycling through the deck. Occasionally can also transform Arona into the Obliterator, but that doesn't come up a whole lot. And then a mana base is very simple, just blue-green, including Hedge Maze, which can also maybe surveil something into the graveyard, and then lots of untapped lanes. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We've got Omen Hawker, Cauldron, Cash Grab. So hoping to mill Fairy and Kami. Yeah, I'll try it. Finding one of our looters also helps as we can keep cycling through the deck and Omen Hawker can make some mana for us. Opponent on what looks to be a domain deck. So they might have Leyline Binding to exile the Cauldron, which is bad news. For now, Marvin can also make Additional mana with abilities from Omen Hawker. And then next turn we can cash grab. Innkeeper's talent, so it might be something a little bit different. Okay, so step one, cash grab, see what we hit. I'm gonna go with probably Archaeologists. Still fine if we mill the aforementioned creatures. And we have plenty of mana for abilities, we just don't have any abilities in the first place. And then uh, play another Omen Hawker, I guess. It's gonna be a Toadstool Admirer, so this is more of an Aura Hexproof deck. Maybe they were just missing a creature up till now. And yeah, it's going to have Ward 2 and an additional Ward 1 if they level up the talent. 
but maybe just keeping up two mana. Kami, we would like to discard. We'll try Archaeologist. Alright, mill the fairy and hit the training grounds. So now, play Cauldron with a plan of exiling Sleep Cursed Fairy. And we can tactically spread around our plus one counters. Because if I put the ability on, let's say, an Omen Hawker, then Marvin will also inherit that same ability. We also milled Rona, so yeah, between Sleep Cursed Fairy, Rona, and Kami. If Marvin survives next turn, we should be able to combo off. So hoping they don't mess with my cauldron. Calyx is fine. So they wouldn't be able to play a Sheltered by Ghosts. So they might still want to enchant the Admirer to enable Calyx's ability. It's going to be Ethereal Armor. All right. I could jump here too if I want. But I'm pretty sure we can combo off next turn. Don't necessarily need the Archaeologist. And then... Exile Sleep Cursed Fairy. Now that the coast is clear for Marvin... Maybe it's easier to put the counter there. So it has more power to make mana with Kami. So things will go a little bit faster. So play Kami. Training grounds will also help. So this can make mana. Can maybe exile Rona first and then just look for another cauldron after we uh, eventually draw into our Hellkite. So this can now tap for five mana. Untap, just paying a single blue thanks to Training Grounds. So we're making infinite mana. And then with infinite mana, I get infinite untaps from Fairy. And with Rona's ability, I get infinite card draw through the deck. So we'll eventually find the Hellkite. And then I just need to find another cauldron to exile the Hellkite after having enough mana, and that should win the game. So we should have it here, as long as I don't misclick or time out. Now comboing with Rona is going to take a little bit longer compared to the Strix, which is just a single blue to activate. Two loot, here we have to tap, draw, discard. Untap. So it does take a few more clicks. There's the Strix. So I guess if I cast the Strix... The problem is I won't have anything to discard to keep another cauldron in hand if I draw into it. So it doesn't really help. So yeah, we just need to keep drawing until we find the Hellkite. And then even if the Hellkite happens to be underneath all the other cauldrons in my deck, we still get to keep a card in hand, so that's not an issue. Uh, cash grab I could also keep. Just make some green mana here. And cast it. We'll speed things up a little bit. And there's one cauldron.
24 cards remaining. I've moved on to using the spacebar now as well, so we can maybe speed things up a little bit. But always have to be careful since it's easier to misclick when spamming the spacebar. So Hellkite's somewhere in the bottom here. Yeah, I didn't want to keep the cash grab and let go of the cauldron, since then we might get in trouble. And there we go. Alright, so now I need to make a little bit more mana first. Cauldron fixes for colored mana as well, so we don't need to worry about making red specifically. Bones at 16. We have... Training Grounds in play, which also discounts the Hellkite's ability by one. So we should have enough here. Untap. Play Cauldron. Keep the new one. Exile Hellkite. And start spitting fire. Alright, took us a while. Just gotta hope I don't time out here. Since I wouldn't be able to make infinite mana right now. This is actually a pretty epic countdown with a rope. Can I get five more activations in? It's gonna be close. Two. One. All right, we got there. Oof, the game kept it exciting here, even though the game was technically over a while ago. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. What do we think of our hand? We're missing Sleep Cursed Fairy and Cauldron, but uh, Marvin plus Rona is a nice pairing. Cash Grab can dig pretty deep, so we'll give it a shot. And then start with Hedge Maze to play our 2-drop on Curve. Don't really need this tricks. Can look for additional lands and Cauldron. Another Marvin. If I play Marvin first, then next turn I get to play Rona and immediately activate it. But if I play Rona first, then we get the untap trigger from casting a legend. So it kind of depends whether we want to play around removal or not. Opponent mono white so far. And they've got to get lost. At least it destroys Rona, so it's still in the graveyard for us. Now I go Marvin plus either explore or play Omen Hawker. Don't mind exploring, although Omen Hawker can also pay for the explore. And then by putting more plus one counters on Marvin and then playing Kami, we can immediately tamp it for a lot of mana. That opponent's gonna exile Marvin. No fun allowed. We'll try again. Don't need another Omen Hawker. Sleep Curse Fairy is good to have in the graveyard. Or it cannot get exiled by a Sunfall. And sure, we'll play the Strix. Could have started there to maybe see if they had removal they wanted to cast first. 
Alright, more of an exiled now. So let's see if we can maybe find a cauldron. Omen Hawker can activate the Strix. So we can discard the Kami. And for now, another Runa. So, yeah. Just gonna hit for one. Could even hang back, honestly, in case they have removal that targets attacking creatures. Evangelist, so they are a tokens deck. And still probably discarding the Kami. Although we could play it, and then if we find Cauldron, it's going to be a little faster to combo off. Play Kami. And then, yeah, I guess we'll play Rona. So we get one free loot per turn. Can maybe activate Strix twice per turn as well. Cash grab seems worth casting. Can maybe find the cauldron. Not quite. Another Marvin was tempting too, but Archaeologist digs deeper for the cauldron. Then we cast Archaeologist. Maybe start with a Rona activation. Fairy can go. And uh, sure, play Archaeologist. And that's a miss, so yeah, now we're out of cards, so there's no point in looting anymore. Which is why I wanted to loot with Rona first. Could have maybe looted with the Strix first as well. But would not have found the Cauldron. So our opponent's making another bank, drawing a card. They're a little bit behind on mana, so they very easily could have Sunfall in hand. Alright, so we'll start looting. Alright, there we go. So try Cauldron. Untaps Rona. And then activate on Kami. Exiling a fairy. And then Kami would pick up two plus one counters, so it can already go infinite here. Alright, so we have infinite mana, although I'm empty-handed, so I wouldn't be able to necessarily draw into another cauldron and exile the Hellkite to win the game. So infinite mana, still not all that helpful, but I guess we get to transform Marona here. Alright, so now we can transform Marona. And go on the beatdown plan. Our opponent jumps, so they get to make another token and draw with talent. But yeah, next turn we should be able to just win the game, and our opponent's still two mana away from Sunfall. But they might be able to remove the Kami. Virtue draw card. So now we just get to untap, dig until we find Hellkite, activate Cauldron, and then with our infinite mana we now have infinite damage. That's the plan. So yeah, let's start making mana here. Opponent cast another Virtue, so at least I'll be tapped out, so we can combo in peace. Alright, step one, just make as much mana as possible. Since we'll need a lot of it to eventually win with the Hellkite. We can activate this Trix to draw and discard. I'll loot a few more times. I guess we could cast a cash grab, which might speed things up. Is 
Still nothing. Don't want to cast Archaeologist, because if we miss, then we're empty-handed, and then I won't be able to loot into anything. Although I guess we don't actually need to keep a card in hand. Since we just need the Hellkite to be in the graveyard, so maybe it was actually fine to um, cast the Training Grounds earlier. Would have made mana faster, since we only need to pay one to untap. Because, yeah, if we draw into the Hellkite and immediately discard it, that's fine. Alright, I guess I'll cast it now. So now we get two mana for each iteration of the loop, and the Strix only costs us one mana to activate. So probably should have started there. We should be there soon. There we go. Exile the Alkites. Counters on Kami. And then now we can make a lot of mana. And use the Alkites ability to close it out. Points at 15, and I guess, yeah, with the training grounds, we only need 15 mana. Since it's one per activation. Cauldron also fixing our colors, so we don't need to worry about making red specifically. Alright. Probably could have uh, sped up the combo by just casting the training ground sooner. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We've got a promising hand, just missing Cauldron pretty much. Kick things off with our fairy so it can start untapping. And then Marvin could also come in handy. As a way to maybe make a lot of mana once we play the Kami. Opponent's green-white. Not sure yet what flavor. Could be an Aura deck, could be a more controlling Domain deck, which seems to be the case with Up the Beanstalk. So we will have to watch out for Leyline Binding. There's Cauldron. Alright, so we have all the pieces we need. Question is, how quickly can we combo off here? I mean, I can also just cast a Kami, and then hope Marvin sticks around. This just seemed like the most mana-efficient turn. So yeah, next turn... If I get a plus one counter on Marvin, we have infinite mana. Infinite mana with Strix is infinite drawing discard, which finds Hellkite, which wins us the game. And Overlord's not gonna stop us. So yeah, this should be a turn for win. Although it's gonna take me a bunch of clicking. So yeah, play the Strix. Can tap something down. Need to, I guess, mill a creature with Archaeologist, or we can just discard the Archaeologist to the Strix, which is guaranteed. Use Cauldron on Marvin, getting two plus one counters thanks to the Kami. So now we're making two mana with each iteration of the loop. And then infinite mana means infinite Strix activations. 
which eventually discards the Hellkites, and then I do need to cast another Cauldron to finish them off with enough mana floating. This might be a little bit faster if we find a Training Grounds, which will discount the Strix's ability, as well as the Untap ability from Sleep Curse Fairy. So we can maybe go digging. All right, there we found it. So I can cast Training Grounds. And then now make a bunch more mana. And then it's only a single blue mana to use the Strix's ability to try and find the Hellkite now. Our opponent may not know it yet, but they should be dead. I'll keep the extra cauldron in hand, so we already have it to exile the Hellkite once we discard it here. This should be going pretty quickly. It does help that we have the tricks in play instead of having to scroll through Marvin's entire menu. We're about to make a bunch more mana here. Untap. Yeah, batching the tasks is usually more efficient than just uh, alternating constantly. It's almost like we're playing a different game than Magic. It's like some sort of task optimization game. It's not for everyone, and I'm sure I'll get a lot of comments complaining about the combo taking too long to enact, but that's just one of the limitations of playing it on Arena. So we'll keep digging. halfway through the deck, so still gonna take us a second to find the Hellkite if it's hiding. But I can't afford to let my opponent untap with 5 mana since then my board's gonna be gone. Hellkite's in the bottom 10 here, it seems. And then I can immediately make enough mana to actually win with Hellkite once we find it, but I'm still at 20. Can also maybe get an attack in for 6 after getting two more counters. Is it actually going to be the last card? We're getting close. And the rope started, so that's bad news. Alright, was well, not quite the last card, but uh, close enough. Exile the Alkites. Two counters on Marvin. And then activate. 14 times. I don't think we'll have enough time to activate 14 times and attack for 6 here. 
And yeah, we timed out. But we had it. Just uh, took us a little bit too long to find the Hellkite. There's Sunfall, so now our board's gone. Alright, well, that's the drawback of playing this combo on Arena. One card remaining. So, play Omen Hawker. Can still, I guess, use the Hellkite's ability here. So, is there anything I can come up with? Now we've got a bit of time to think. But, uh, Bun probably has more removal in hand. So we can activate the Hellkite's ability twice. And then next turn we could... Maybe exile another Sleep Cursed Fairy to go infinite again. But all it takes is a removal spell on the Omen Hawker here. Archangel of Wrath will do it. Alright, well, that's an unfortunate way to go, but uh, yeah, shows the reality of playing this deck. And yeah, I was trying to go through it as quickly as possible. Even hitting the spacebar. But uh, not always good enough. So, can exile the Sleep Cursed Fairy. So we technically have Kami and Fairy assembled again. But my creature does have Summoning Sickness. So I wouldn't be able to tap Marvin for mana here. Which means we don't get to infinitely combo off. I guess I can still get there in my upkeep next turn if they don't have removal for Marvin again. So we do get another chance somehow. Put an upkeep stop, but all right, opponent's got to get lost, so... Good a few attempts, but uh, yeah, as we kind of feared, they had plenty of removal in hand, and that'll do it. Good game, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a Promising Hand. We've got Fairy, Kami, and Cauldron. So those are all the pieces we need. Hopefully they don't get exiled. Facing a green enchantment deck, so they might have sheltered by ghosts in there somewhere. For now, play a Marvin. And then if I cast the Kami, Marvin could immediately tap for two mana. Training Grounds is kind of exciting too. So I think we have all the pieces to combo next turn. Potentially, if everyone survives here. They might kill Marvin now. Alright, so now it's gonna maybe take me a little bit longer to set up. Put on Junt Colors. So it might be more of a Delirium deck than an Enchantment deck. Filling the graveyard with Cash Grab. And another Marvin. I'm actually happy if they destroy the Kami, since we want it in the graveyard. I'll tap it now. Can maybe play the Strix, tapping their lands, and then we might see them make a move. And they're gonna cut down the Strix. Could activate it a couple times in response now. Or we can just let that go, play Marvin. And then with Cauldron we'll inherit the Strix's ability anyway. But yeah, Marvin, if it gets to untap, we'll be able to make infinite mana once we put a plus one counter on it. So our opponent once again destroys the correct creature here. Alright, so... Time for Cauldron. Could immediately exile the Strix. Put counters on Fairy, start beating down. As well as getting to loot. Cauldron also good at shutting down Delirium potentially, but they've got five types, so I don't think I bother. So 
So get the extra counter thanks to the Kami. Hit you for five. And then I'll pass. So if they play Liliana and Minus, I sack Kami and then next turn with Cauldron we can go infinite. I don't want to trump the beastie because then they make me sack Fairy and I'm out of creatures. Right, invasion, so they might be able to make me sacrifice both creatures. Well, discard Hellkite, that's a good one. So, Kami down. Do you have another removal spell? Just attacking the invasion for three. Alright, so... Can make infinite mana. Infinitely loot. Already have Hellkite ready to go. So... I'll just have to find another Cauldron at some point to exile the Hellkite after making infinite mana. And this shouldn't take too long, especially with Training Grounds giving us a discount. We get to make a lot of mana per iteration of the loop. And then it's only one mana to activate the Strix's ability to draw and discard. So we should find another Cauldron in no time. Alright, already found a Cauldron. So yeah. Got a bunch of mana floating. Play Cauldron. Exile Hellkite. And then 15 activations will do it. Could also attack for 7. So yeah, even with our opponent slowing us down, taking out Marvin, which could have maybe set up the combo a couple turns ago. We still got there eventually. It is interesting to see these blue lightning bolts going my opponent's way. Don't often see blue creatures that deal damage. Alright, and there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got what looks like a keeper. A few ways to draw and discard and fill the graveyard. Finding a training ground to discount for activated abilities could also come in handy. Opponent on the red. Try Rona first. Also would have been reasonable to start with Marvin, and then as soon as I play Rona, I can already start looting. Opponent appears to be a red aggro, maybe an aura deck, which is going to be a tough matchup if they build up a huge creature. For now, not hitting on Kami either as a way to maybe make a bit more mana. Or we could go for Marvin, give us more draw and discard, and then when I play Kami, I can still make mana with it too. Yeah, let's see what Rona reveals. Just a land that can go. So we'll go with Marvin, well, let's Rona on tap. And Hellkite is good to have in the graveyard. Okay. I don't think there's a point in attacking with the Strix. So our opponent's going to start enchanting their challenger, and yeah, Shelter by Ghost is the most annoying one, since it removes one of our permanents. Probably Rona. Which means I can still play Kami, and then Marvin can make two mana. And cast Cash Grab. My opponent actually going for Marvin. Fair enough. So we'll keep looting with Rona. Don't think I'm interested in transforming it either, although that would still have to wait a turn. If 
I play Kami, then next turn I can maybe activate Strix and Cash Grab. But if we can find a Cauldron, that would help. And we did. Sleep Curse Fairy already in the graveyard, so we're getting close. Untap Rona, which can discard the Kami. Can do that at instant speed. Scavenger to give them more plus one counters. And for now I'll take it. So we'll activate Rona. Discard Kami. And then Cauldron exiling the Kami. Find another fairy. So I wanna exile the fairy now. Counter on Rona. So we can now make infinite mana. And with infinite mana, we'll eventually find a way to win the game since we already have the Hellkite ready to go. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got Fairy, Archaeologist, Rona. So lots of ways to fill the graveyard. Yeah, I think I'll try this. If we find Kami and Cauldron, we're good to go. Bone's gonna miss with her duress. And we'll give Rona a try. Got a few backups. Bone just black green so far. And does Rona eat a removal spell? Gonna be a deep cavern bat now probably taking the archaeologist so it's gonna be a little bit harder to find the cauldron and to mill the kami that can draw the kami although having it in the graveyard might actually be better all right i found cauldron perfect so play cauldron Untapping Rona. And we can pass a turn. So next turn we should be able to make infinite mana. What we don't have yet is infinite draw and discard. And if they remove the fairy, then we'll still be able to exile it next turn alongside the Kami to make infinite mana with Rona. Opponent's got an unstoppable slasher, I see. So it's important to leave some blockers back, potentially. Alright, so now we're just digging for the Strix, pretty much. And there we have it. So, untap Sleep Curse Fairy. Taps to make four mana, so that's infinite mana. And then now I could play the Strix. So I can just activate it a little bit more easily. Make infinite mana. Finding a training ground would speed things up a little bit. And then I haven't used Cauldron this turn yet, so we can just keep digging until we find the Hellkite, exile it, and that's infinite damage as well. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We have... All of the combo pieces we need except Kami. One land could be a bit of an issue, but we're on the draw, so we're pretty likely to find a second one by the time we need it. I'll give it a shot. Can get the Sleep Cursed Fairy going first. And Training Ground's also helpful, although land two currently a bit more important. Alright, so we didn't quite get there. Go for training grounds. 
But we did find the Kami, so we have all the combo pieces now. Liliana can be problematic. Could have been a reason to play as Trix instead of the training grounds to finish it off. Although them making me discard is not necessarily a bad thing. Have you ever seen a tapped Liliana? Keep forest. Kami can go, I think. Could also try and cast it next turn to be mana efficient. Can also activate Strix for one mana, so yeah, either way, we'll have ways to spend that mana. And an Overlord making blockers now. So we can't attack Liliana. So that will be able to minus again. So I don't want to play Cauldron yet. Since I need Sacrifice Fodder. And then what makes the most sense? I guess cast a Kami, Sacrifice Trix. And then Kami plus Fairy next turn will make infinite mana. Their opponent is a reanimator deck. Luckily, cards like Elspeth Smite, not particularly effective in the matchup. Ooh, cut down, that's ugly. So now they can remove my entire board. No, opponent keeps plussing. So, Arona can go. So if I draw a land, that would help. Omen Hawker's not bad either. So I can sack Omen Hawker. And then I guess Cauldron also just good against the Reanimator deck. Can exile their stuff as well. But yeah, I just need to keep a creature alive. So we can start comboing with the Cauldron. Opponent pluses, so Marvin's gone. Drop it. This card's yet another Liliana. Alright, I'll take four. One card left, it's another Overlord. Alright, so the coast is clear. I can make infinite mana. By exiling Kami and then Fairy. Although it's going to be a somewhat slow process. Can already loot for now. Just to try and mill the Hellkite. And Marvin. Marvin sort of helps, but I'll need to keep another card in hand to be able to play another Cauldron after putting Hellkite in the graveyard, so I don't actually think I can cast it here. So we're making two mana with each iteration of the loop, and then it's just a matter of finding the Hellkite. And then another Cauldron to exile the Hellkite for infinite damage. Not gonna cast Archaeologist because there's a fail rate. Alright, so we can keep the other cauldron, so now all we need is Hellkite in the graveyard. And hopefully it's not the bottom card again. Alright, so we'll make some more mana. Even if our opponent does get another turn, it's not necessarily a disaster, since we can just sacrifice Omen Hawker. They're not attacking for lethal. Alright, we'll activate the Strix some more. Alright, there we go. So we should get there now. Just make 60 mana. 
with a discount from training grounds. And then cast Cauldron. Let's see, just making sure we actually have enough. So we can cast Cauldron. Exile Hellkites. And that's time for the fireworks. All right, so we get to see our Simic Cauldron combo in action. And the only thing stopping the deck apparently is the Arena timer. So you do need to be pretty dexterous to pull off the combo in time. Would not recommend playing this on mobile since you're definitely going to time out there. But otherwise it seems like a powerful deck. Even has built-in graveyard hate for other graveyard combo decks. So that's a nice upside. And now with Leyline of Resonance banned, we don't need to worry about dying on turn 2. Of course there are still aggro decks that are capable of presenting lethal on turn 3. So this will be a problem since we don't have any interaction. But if the format slows down just a little bit, we are still able to set up. And as we've seen, we can easily combo on turn 4 already. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.